If you've seen any of my videos before, you might be thinking, wait, hang on, didn't this guy do a remix in Firebase video already? I did, and in it, I mentioned I'd be reaching out to the creators of Remix to see if I was missing something, because it was easier than I thought it would be. Unfortunately, I was, so I've pulled the original video. A big thanks to Ketsy Dodds, Ryan Florence, and Elliot Hesp, the guy who created the React Native Firebase library, for helping me with the correct implementation. So this video is gonna feature a mix of new stuff, plus some content from the original video, starting with this intro. Uh, but just quickly, before we get into it, I put a lot of work into this video, twice now actually. So you'd be doing me a massive favor by liking the video and subscribing to my channel if you're not already. It'll really help me get this video in front of others who might not see it otherwise. Okay, roll the tape. Welcome to the Remix Show. Last week, I did a video where we go through the basic Remix tutorial. So if you're not seeing that, or if you've not looked into Remix yet, hit pause here and go back and watch that video first. I'll link to it above and in the description below. I'm gonna pick up where I left off with this video and convert the demo app, which if you'll remember, is a very basic blog style app from using the file system to store data to using Firebase's Cloud Firestore database. I'll also implement Firebase authentication as well. With that all said, let's dive in and get started. Okay, so this is what the app looked like when we left it. We'll clean it up a bit and remove all of the example stuff that we don't need. We'll change the text on the homepage to welcome to Remix Firebase demo. Let's start by going into Firebase and creating a new project. We'll call this Remix Firebase and click on Create Project. We want to set up a Cloud Firestore database. So we'll click on Create Database and we'll start in test mode, which means that we can read and write to the database without any authentication for the next month. I'm in Europe, so I'll select Europe West as my storage location. Now that that's done, I'm gonna manually add the posts collection and populate it with my first post. I'll use the slug as the ID and we'll add the body, title and slug to the record, all as strings. We now need to hook our Remix app up to Firebase. So we'll go into project settings and click this icon to set up our Firebase web app. Firebase helpfully gives us the command to install the NPM package. So we'll copy npm install Firebase and run it in the command line. We can then copy the config and we'll create a utils folder and in there a file called db.server.js. We can paste the Firebase config and we'll initialize the app only if it hasn't already been initialized. If you're doing this yourself for real, remember that your API key in this config should be stored in a secret and never committed to GitHub. There are instructions in the Remix documentation on how to do this using end files and .env from npm. To get started with using Cloud Firestore, we need to start by installing the Firebase admin package. Since we are running these actions on the server, we will be using the server-side SDK instead of their client-side packages. In our Firebase config, we've already initialized Firebase, but we'll also need to initialize the admin app. We'll need to import and assign application default to the credential key, and I'll come back to that in a minute. We can then get Firestore from admin and assign it to DB. We'll export that for use in the app. Let's start by converting the getPosts function in the post module. We can delete everything that was in there before, which, if you'll remember from the previous video, was where we fetched our posts from the file system and not from any database. We'll import db from the db.server file, and we can then query our Firestore database for all posts. Let's check if that worked. Uh, no. I need to export an object in my db server file and not return one. So this next error is telling us that the admin app doesn't have any reference to our project. We'll need to go into our project settings, service accounts, and click on generate new private key. Then you'll need to click generate key, which will download a JSON file containing the key. I've already done this here. Once you've done that, rename the file to whatever you like. I have called mine service account key.json and move it to the root of your project. You don't want to commit this file to git, so be sure to add it into your git ignore file. Once you've done all that, open your .env file or create one if you don't have one already and add your Google application credentials key 
where the value is the path to your service account key. The key needs to be exactly as you see it here, as this is what application default in our initialize function will be looking for. To make the link between application default and our end file, we need to use .env. Once that's done, we can now see the post we saved to Firestore shows up in our app. We can click into the post and that works too, but only because the get post function is taking the slug and reading it from the file system and not Firestore. Let's delete the posts from our file system and we can now see that the post page gives us an error. So in get post, we need to fetch the post from Firestore. And again, we can delete all the old code already in this function. Using DB, we'll get the post from Firestore that matches the slug we've passed in from the params. This time, when we click through to the post, we don't see anything, but that's expected. Our code is looking for post.html, but we don't have that anymore, so we can change it to post.body. Now we can see the post body, but we're missing the title. So let's add that back in wrapped in a h2 tag. Okay, so we need to tackle create post next. I'll first add a link in the navigation to the admin route, and I also need to fix the path to each link from admin. In the new post form, we'll change all references to markdown to reference body instead. Let's clear out the old logic in the create post function. We'll use set from Firestore to use the slug to create our new post. Let's test it out and success. We can now create posts in Firestore. If we have a look at the Cloud Firestore console, we can see the new record we just created and with the slug we gave it. I'm going to create another post using one from the basic file system demo, because one thing we don't get here that we did before is the formatting that came with our Markdown implementation. This 90s mixtape has a list, and you'll see when we create it, it just displays the list as a string and doesn't preserve the formatting we expect. So let's quickly create a parse body function that replaces the new lines in that string with HTML break elements. If we parse the post body before rendering it, we can see that it now renders correctly. Next, we need to add authentication to our app. Let's go into the Firebase console, click into authentication, and then click on get started. For this demo, we're gonna set up email and password sign in. Obviously for authentication, we'll need a login and sign up page which I fleshed out already to save a bit of time. I've created a form in both pages, and we're using the action handler from Remix on the server to pull email and password from our form's post request. I've also used link from Remix to allow the user to navigate back and forth between signup and login. Let's start by going to our db.server file and creating a signup function that takes email and password as arguments. We'll need to import create user with email and password from Firebase auth, and we can return the result of that create user function. Let's export it and import into the signup component. We can't just rely on Firebase to authenticate this app. We're using the client-side SDK on the server to create the user. So we also need to use Remix's built-in cookie and session features to create a complete authentication session. Inside our action handler, we can destructure the Firebase auth user from the object that gets returned from sign-in. We'll need to get the ID token from that user. We'll give that token and the redirect location to a create user session function, which we'll create next. Let's start though by creating a session.server file alongside the db.server file. Let's use .env config again, as we'll need to use a session secret. We can create that in the end file, use whatever string you like, and let's throw an error in case it doesn't exist. Remix gives us a create cookie session storage method, and I'm just gonna paste in some boilerplate here that I've copied from the docs. Note that it takes our session secret that we've just imported. Let's start on our create user session function. We'll need to extract the token from the ID token. We need to create the session token and we'll need Firebase for that. So let's create a function in the db.server file. We can use verify ID token from admin auth and throw an error if it's out of date. Otherwise, we'll set a two week expiry on it and create the session cookie. Now that's done, we can import it into our session.server file. Let's create a new session and set the token we just created. Now we can use the redirect location to redirect with our committed session in the headers. Now, of course, we just need to import that function in the signup component and use it in our action handler. 
and let's see if that works. Uh, yep, I need to define admin auth, which comes from the admin.auth function. And also I've got a typo here, so let's fix that too. And now we can successfully sign up. If we take a look at the application tab, you can also see that we have a session cookie with a token value. Now we're signed in, before we can set up login, we need a way to sign out. I'm gonna add a sign out button to the main index route and we'll use a form action again for this. There are two steps to signing out with this implementation. We wanna first sign out of Firebase, and then we need to destroy the session we created with Remix. The Firebase signout method takes auth as its only argument. We'll then import that from db.server into session.server. First though, let's create a destroy session method, which will take the request as an argument. We can fetch the session from session storage and then call destroy session. We can then return a redirect with a new cookie in the headers. Finally, we can create our signout method and call the Firebase signout and the destroy session methods. Inside our action handler, we just call and return signout and pass in the request. And let's not forget to import form from Remix. Now we can click on the sign up button and we can see that the redirect works. And also, if you look at the session in the application tab, you can see the token value is empty. The sign in function will look very similar to the sign out function, except we use sign in with email and password from Firebase auth. I'm going to copy all of the token code from the sign up page into the login page and just call sign in instead. Now I can successfully sign in using the account I created when signing up. You'll notice a token is again visible in our session cookie. The last bit of this is really to protect routes and database actions by verifying the user session. In our session file, let's create a function that will get the user session. If no token exists, we'll return null. If there is an error getting the token user, we'll return null. Otherwise, we can return the user. For the posts page, I'm gonna let the getPosts method handle this check, but first I need to give it the request in the loader. In the post module, I'm gonna need redirect from Remix and the getUserSession function. We'll simply verify that we have a session user, and if we don't, redirect the user to the login page. So I'm gonna sign out, and if I click on posts, you can see that I can't access it. I'm just redirected to the login page. On the admin route, we are calling getPosts, but we haven't given it the request yet. So let's do that. And we can do the same for all functions that are in the getPost module. Inside the main index route, we aren't fetching any data, but we can still use the loader to make sure the user can't visit the main index route unless they are authenticated. And we need to make sure to always return something in the loader. So we'll return null if they are logged in. And I forgot to add async to the loader function, so I'll do that now. Now let's run a few more tests. And it looks like everything is working as expected. Let's finally see if we can create a new post whilst authenticated. And there we go. So that's done. Uh, lastly, let's just remove this fake delay we added in the original demo to mock a network request delay. And that's everything. Remix is really interesting and I'll probably continue to play around with it. If you've enjoyed this video, please make sure to give it a like and subscribe to my channel for more content similar to this. Happy coding and I'll see you in the next video.